part of our journey as believers involves learning to walk with God even when we do not understand fully, when we do not have answers to the why and what. Yes, these are what we have when we walk in the Spirit, when we walk resting in the Lord and relying on the Lord. So let's stand up to our feet this morning for the last time in 2017. <laughs> Lift your Bible high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold, and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word. I believe His word. And I live by His word. Christ is my master. And to Him, I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please turn around to people next to you. Say hello. Shake hands. Give them a nice smile. Share your name if you can. And you may be seated, please. Part of our journey as believers is learning to walk with God even through those times and the seasons when we don't understand what's going on. And I think many of us may have been through those kinds of seasons in life. They've got to have no idea why. I have no idea what. You know, things around me are beyond understanding. I can't figure this out. And it's, you know, actually that's supposed to be the normal way we live because we live by faith. But unfortunately for you and me, we are very rational beings. We want it all figured out. <laughs> we want everything under control. And if it's not under control, we feel uncomfortable. You know, something's not right because I'm not in charge. I, haven't, I don't have my mind wrapped around what I'm going through. And, and so uh, it makes us feel uncomfortable uh, and, uh, you know, we we tend to lose a lot of things. We lose our joy, our peace, our nerves, and everything else. But this morning, I just want to bring us back to a few simple things about learning to journey with God through life, even when things are beyond our understanding. You don't have answers to the why, the what. You don't have the answers. There are things happening around you and me that are beyond our ability to comprehend, uh, uh, understand. And yet, what I want to challenge us is this, that in those very seasons and in those very times of life, you and I have access to and you and I can actually walk in peace that passes all understanding, that you and I can walk in joy that cannot be explained, that we can walk in love that's beyond measure and beyond knowledge, and we can walk in faith that's beyond reason in the midst of those very situations that are beyond our understanding. Very simple message. I want to just invite you and me to walk this way because that's our, our life as believers. First of all, we begin with God. The fact that God himself is so infinite his ways and his thoughts are beyond ours. I mean, we don't even need to say this, but just in case we forgot. God doesn't fit into our understanding. He's way beyond that. Way beyond. He's infinite. But sometimes we want to even figure God out, you know. I know exactly what God is doing. Figure him out, you know. He fits into my equation. And the fact is he doesn't. God is so infinite. He's way beyond all of that. 
And just some scriptures this morning to remind us. Many of these things will be familiar to us, but just to remind us. In Isaiah 40, verse 25 and verse 26, God says, You know, to whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number? He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. So God is saying, you know, what is your picture of me? I mean, how big am I to you? To what will you liken me? With what, you know, how would you measure me? How would, what dimensions would you put around me? Just, hey, just lift up your eyes. Look at the sky. Look at all the hosts of them. I know them all by name. I have the account. I order them. I put them in place. That's how infinite God is. He's bigger than even his creation. And we know these verses in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, where God says, you know, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your so the fact is, is that, that God's ways are so much higher and his thoughts are so much greater than ours. And therefore, you and I, just in case we forgot, you and I don't know everything. We just don't know everything. You know, yes, there are times when we know God gives us words of knowledge and God gives us words of wisdom and, and there is a revelation, there is insight. But all of that are just bits, tiny bits and pieces of his infinite wisdom. You know, we have the mind of Christ, but that doesn't mean you know everything. It just means that he reveals to you things you and I need to know. And so God is infinite. We don't know everything. And like how, you know... Uh, Deuteronomy says, Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29 says, the secret things belong to God. And the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children that we may walk in them, that we may fear God. So there are those secret things that belong to God and God doesn't necessarily reveal it to us right here and right now. We want to know it right now. Tell me right now, God, why? <laughs> Tell me right now, God, what to do. We want it here and now. And God says, I'm going to hold it secret for a while. The secret things belong to God. Things that he does reveal are things that he wants us to walk in for that moment, that season, that, that time. So you walk in it. So the mo this morning, I just want to bring to our remembrance, so to speak. Not This isn't anything new. But just to remind us, you know, what do we do? When we go through those seasons when we do not understand and we don't know what to do. Things happen in life. I don't understand. I don't know what to do. I don't have the answers. How do we walk through it? Proverbs 4 and verse 18 says this. It brings out this beautiful picture. It says, the path of the just is like the shining sun. That shines brighter and brighter until the noon day. So it's like when you get up in the morning, there's fog all, all around you. Things are not very clear. But you don't just fall back in bed. Oh, there's fog outside. Some of us might. but <laughs> No, you get up and you start doing. You start going because you know that as the day progresses, things are going to clear up. The sun's going to come out, it's going to get bright, it's going to get clear. And that's how you and I walk with God. There are those seasons when there is fog, it's, it's, it's not very clear, you can't see very far ahead, it, it, things are dim, unclear. But what do you do? You keep walking the path that God has set before you. You keep walking the path. And as you keep walking the path, verse 18 says, it's going to become like the noonday sun. It's going to get clear. So you're walking the path in anticipation, knowing that the road is going to clear up. And so for you and I, many times we have to walk through those seasons when things are not that clear, but we still keep walking. 
the path God has set before us. Even through those seasons when we do not understand and when we do not know what to do, we can walk in peace, joy, love, and faith. Virtues which are given to us by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Sometimes people get all upset because they don't understand. So that whole season, when you could have been walking in love, joy, peace, and faith, you're going through it miserably. Why? Because I don't understand. I don't have answers. Hey, we all go through those seasons. But when you're going through those seasons where you don't know the why, the what, the wherefore, you can still walk in love. You can still walk in joy. You can still walk in peace. You can still walk in faith. Amen? It can still be a sign and a wonder to many people. It's like, how in the world are you able to walk in that kind of peace? How are you able to walk in that kind of joy? How are you able to walk in that kind of faith? And how are you able to walk in that kind of love when all this stuff is happening around you? That's beyond understanding. But I just want to remind you and me that we can. And in fact, if we want to be a little stronger, we must. <laughs> we must. That's the way we're supposed to be walking. Through those seasons of life where we don't know why, we don't know what, we don't understand it, it's okay. I can still walk with what the Holy Spirit puts inside of me. Amen? So, we must learn to walk in peace that passes understanding. It's beyond understanding. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. You and I are very familiar with it. We probably would say it backwards. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ. Just look, in everything, in everything. Now don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, in those seasons. That you don't understand. In the middle of that, what do you do? It says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything. With thanksgiving, you make your requests known to God. You say, God, I don't understand it, but God just get me through it. God, I don't understand it, but I know you will bring me through, or this need will be met, or this situation will be resolved, or this whatever that, whatever that you're dealing with. God, you'll take care of it. Let your requests be made known to God. And when you do that, he says, the peace of God, which is beyond understanding. And like, you can't explain it, but you can have it. Amen? You can't explain it, but you can have it. The peace of God, which is beyond understanding, will guard your heart. Keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And that's for the believer, for you and me, to walk in. It just tells us to do this. You know, you put all the, those, those, unanswered, those anxious things, all the things that cause you worry and cause you to fret. Put it on God and you can have this peace that is beyond understanding. Think about joy. We can learn to walk in joy that cannot be explained. Peter is writing his epistle to the Jews who have been dispersed. They've been scattered uh, because of their faith and their persecution that has come upon them because of their faith in Christ. And so Peter writes, and I'm reading uh, from chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. I'm reading from the easy to read version. He says, verse 7, these troubles test your faith. So they're being persecuted. So he's addressing that. He says, you know, these persecutions, these troubles, they test your faith and prove that your faith is pure. And such faith is worth more than gold. Gold can be proved to be pure by fire, but gold will ruin when your faith is proven to be pure, the result will be praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ comes. Verse 8, you have not seen Christ, but still you love him. You can't see him now, but you believe in him. You are filled with a wonderful and heavenly joy that cannot be explained. Just look, 
you know, what is going on around you? Persecution, trouble, people are persecuting you for your faith. And that's what, that's what your situation is. But in the middle of that situation, you are believing in someone who you've never seen. You're trusting in someone who you, know, you never met. And as a result of that, what, are you, what do you have? In the middle of your persecutions, you have joy that cannot be explained. It's beyond understanding. Amen? That means I can still have a smile on my face when I'm going through the worst thing in my life. People can't see on my face. A description of my circumstance. My circumstance may be bad. But my face is overflowing with joy. That cannot be explained. There's still a smile. You know, a Don Gossett, an old elderly man of God. He used to say this. And I used to say this when I was school. A smile is my style. <laughs> I used to have that written on a little card. And that was his quote. You know, a smile is my style. You know, that's my style. <laughs> like, just smile. He used to say another thing. I'm blessed with heaven's best. <laughs> anyway. So, this joy that cannot be explained is still yours and mine. Even though, you know, our circumstances may, may be a little difficult. This is beyond understanding. But it's something that you and I can walk in. I think about this love that is beyond measure. Love that is actually, Paul says, it, it passes knowledge. It's beyond our ability to comprehend. He writes about this in Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. That means I want you to be rooted. I want you to be firmly fixed in this love. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So he's saying, I want you to be rooted and grounded in love, firmly fixed in this love. Nothing can shake you from the love of God. And this love is so vast, there's no measure to it. It's beyond measure. And in fact, he says, I want you to know this love that is beyond knowing. That means you experience this love that is beyond figuring out. You can't figure this out, but you can ex experience it. I want you to be rooted, firmly fixed in this love. So, when things around you may be so bad or so difficult or so uncertain, where, you know, people would question, I mean, you say God still loves you? Why is this happening to you? You say God still cares for you? God still loves you? But, what about this thing in your life? What about that thing that's going on in your life? God still loves you. That you are rooted in. You are so firmly fixed in this love that God has for you. You say, I know God loves me. My situations may not bear record of it, but that's okay. It's not about my situation. They can change. God still loves me. I'm rooted in love. I'm settled in this, that God loves me. And his love for you, his love for me, is beyond measure. Beyond knowing. Can't figure this out. But you're firmly settled in the love of God he has for you. Even in those seasons, even in those situations where you can't figure it out. And people around you will question, God loves you? How is this happening to you? Or why wasn't that prayer answered? Or why didn't that provision come? Why didn't that door open for you? Why didn't God take care of you? You're saying God loves you. But Paul says, I want you to be firmly fixed, rooted in this love. Amen? And we are not only to be recipients of God's love, we are also supposed to be conduits of God's love, the dispensers of God's love. So, the same thing applies. That when people do things to you, you still love them back with the same kind of love, with the love of God. You still love them. So how are you able to do that? Because this love is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. 
And I'm able to give that love. That love which has no measure to it. I'm able to give that love out to people. And they don't understand it. But you and I are firmly fixed in that love. We are loved by God. And we will love people the way God loves them. Amen. And that's beyond understanding. You can have it. You may not be able to explain it. And the last thing is this about faith. So it's a short sermon this morning. You and I can walk in faith that is beyond reason. Where 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. So it's not what I see that determines my faith. My faith is based on something that's unseen. So it's beyond reason. We walk by faith. And, you know, when we follow God in faith, we do not always have an understanding of everything. When we follow God by faith. We don't always have an understanding of everything. It's like Abraham. All he had was a word from God. Faith is based on the word. What God has spoken to you through the scripture or maybe directly by his Holy Spirit. God has spoken a word to you, so faith is based on that word. And Abraham, when he had faith, Hebrews 11 and verse 8 says, By faith Abraham obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. So it's like, I'm on a journey, I don't know the destination. I mean, I know there is a destination, I don't know exactly how, where, what, when am I going to get. I don't have all the answers. But I'm on a journey because I've got a word. God's given me a word, and I'm on the journey. By faith. Abraham obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. That was faith beyond reason. I don't have all the answers, but I'm going because I have a word from God. God's spoken something. And in fact, one of the things that you see in Scripture is, as believers, faith precedes understanding, or understanding follows faith. Hebrews 11, verse 3, by faith we understand. Faith comes first, then your understanding catches up. Faith is of the heart. The understanding is of the mind. So your heart goes first. Your understanding follows. Catches up with it. By faith, we understand. So you start off by faith. and At some point, you'll begin to understand. Oh, now I understand. Five years later. (laughs) This is what God was doing. This is what he was working. Now your understanding is catching up. But five years ago, you began your journey by faith. Even when you did not understand. So, we walk like this. And you know, what we see interesting in the book of Hebrews, this this book of Hebrews, it talks a lot about faith. We see that faith is action But faith is also rest. Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, the writer of Hebrews says, By faith we enter into rest. So faith is rest. But faith is also bold action. You do things. You know, they step out. They they walked around the walls of Jericho. They walked across the Red Sea. And all that. Faith is action. Faith is also rest. How do you put that together? It's like this. That in true faith, you work out of a place of rest. True faith, you work out of a place of rest. That means you're rested in God. You're not agitated. You're not worried. You're in a place of rest. And you work out of that place of rest. That's faith. Are you understanding that? And we are called to walk like that. I am at rest inside. Now I'm working out of that. My faith works. So faith works. I'm working out of that. But inside my place of rest, I already know what God has said. So I'm at rest. I'm not working out of fear. I'm not working out of anxiety. I'm not working out of, oh, if I don't do this, something will happen. No, you're working out of a place of rest. You're at rest in God. You're working out of that. That's true faith. And we can walk in that kind of faith even when we don't understand everything. So, 
What I want to invite you and me as believers is this, that, you know, there are virtues that you and I can walk in that are actually beyond understanding. In those times and those seasons of life, when we still have unanswered questions, we don't know the whys and the whats and the wherefores and all that, we have these virtues that we can walk in. We can walk in peace, in joy, in love, in faith. We can walk in those things. And those are unexplainable, but you've got it inside you because of the Holy Spirit. It's inside you. And you're walking in it. But what must I do to walk in those virtues? I just want to remind you and me about a simple thing. It's learning to just let go. Rely and rest in God. Just let go. Rest in God. And say, God, you are God who is infinite. I know you've got that covered. You've got that taken care of. I'm letting go. I think Psalm 131, and I close with this, paints that picture for us beautifully. Here the psalmist says, Lord, my heart, heart is not haughty. My eyes are not lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. That is what he says in verse 2. I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. So you can imagine a little babe that's well fed, lying, cuddling in the mother's arms, just quiet. And he's saying, look, like that, I have calmed and quieted my, meaning I have decided to come to that place of rest. Like just calm and quiet myself. Just forget about worrying, trying to figure the answer out. Just come to that place of rest like a child. Be in the arms of your heavenly father. So learn to calm and quiet yourself and rest in him. And this really happens in that place of prayer. At least I find for myself, when I'm being troubled by so many different things, my mind is, oh, oh, so many pressures in my mind. The best thing I like to do is to just be alone with God. I don't know, for some of us, maybe our immediate reaction is, dial my closest friend. You know, it's on speed dial. I don't know, maybe that's your reaction. But, for me, what I found so useful, when my mind is being, you know, all these things, pressures on my mind, what do I do? If I want to come and quiet myself before God, just go alone and pray. Talk to God. Pray. Spend that time with God. Pour out your heart before Him. Calm and quiet yourself before God. Then you can begin to walk in the spirit. You begin to walk in peace that is beyond understanding. You begin to have joy that cannot be explained. You begin to walk in love. You're rooted in love and you'll be able to walk in love that is beyond measure, beyond knowing. And you're walking in faith that's beyond reason. It's given to you and me by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the choice is yours and mine. How are we going to handle those seasons of life when we don't have the answers? The whys, the what. What are you going to do? I don't know. Why did all, why all this happening? I don't know. We can either get agitated, upset, anxious, worried, or in the midst of all that, we can walk. In peace, in joy, in love, in faith. And the choice is yours and mine. Amen? I want to invite you and me, you know, that even through those seasons when we do not understand, we don't know what to do, let's choose to walk in these virtues that are actually beyond understanding. Brought to us by the Holy Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, 
It's peace. It's faith. The fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit of God. He puts that in us. You and I can choose to walk in it. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. I call our worship team up here. Closing, we're going to sing that song. Your plans are still to prosper. You're sovereign over us. And as we sing that song, I want you just to come into that place of being, experiencing God's peace that's beyond understanding. Joy that cannot be explained. Love that's beyond measure. And faith that's beyond reason. Come to that place. Say, God, I'm letting go of these things. I'm coming to that place of rest before you, God. I may not have the answers, but my understanding will eventually come. It'll come. You'll understand. In some time, you'll understand. But for now, we make the journey. You walk even when things are a little foggy. Still walk the path. Still keep it. Keep going. Keep going. Father, even as we stand before you this morning, Holy Spirit, I pray that if any of us here, God, are, have, have come under the turmoil, the, the pressure, the, all these unanswered things around us, Holy Spirit, I ask that right now as we stand and we sing, as we worship, that you'll replace, oh God, the confusions with that peace that's beyond understanding. Replace heaviness, sadness, gloominess, depression. Dismantle it, take it off our lives, replace it with joy that cannot be explained. God, if there has been unsettling God from the fact that you love us no matter what. Holy Spirit, help us bring us back to that place where we are firmly fixed in the love of God for us. Or if we've let bitterness and hatred and unforgiveness creep into our hearts towards people. Holy Spirit, remove that. Replace it with the love of Christ. That we will still be able to love, even though we can't explain why we still love. God, bring us to that place where we will walk by faith and let our understanding catch up later. Do this work in our hearts, Holy Spirit, as we stand here in the presence of the Father. There is strength within sorrow There is beauty in our tears And you meet us in That casts out fear. You are working and are waiting, sanctifying us and beyond our understanding. You're teaching us. To try, oh, your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire, the flood. You faithful forever, perfect in love. You are so. You are.
wisdom unimagined Who could understand your way Leaning high above the heavens Reaching down in endless grace You're the lifter some things this year in 2017 that I, I just don't understand I've gone through situations where like what I heard this morning I, I just don't know the why I don't know the what if you're here like that this morning you just need somebody to pray with you I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and I'm going to ask people around you just to come and pray over you and as you're prayed for by other believers here in this place, I believe the Spirit of God will minister to you. And the warmth of His love will overcome you, just come over you. And you will receive, you will receive grace that in spite of what you've been through in 2017, that you will walk out of this year with peace that is beyond understanding. The joy that cannot be explained. With love that's beyond measure. With faith that's beyond reason. So if you don't mind, just, just raise your hand. I'm going to ask people around you to come and pray with you. So you need prayer this morning. Just raise your hand. Let's just minister to one another. Just raise your hand. Say, you know, I'd like to somebody to pray for me. I want you to just go. Just see the hands that are raised. Just go ladies to ladies, men to men, if you don't mind. And just, just go, stand with them and pray with them. I like the men just more out. You find some other brothers with hands raised. Ladies, you find some ladies, just go to them with hands raised. Just pray and say, God, release grace by your Holy Spirit. Give them peace that is beyond understanding. Give them joy that cannot be explained. Give them love, Lord. Help them to be rooted in the love of God. Just pray what we heard this morning. Just pray for them. Anybody else, just raise your hand. If you need prayer, just raise your hand. We'll have people come to you right where you are just to pray with you. Let's take a moment. Just pray. Just pray. For those amongst us, God, who in 2017 may have gone through those situations. But this morning, by your Spirit, 
release grace. For us to be able to walk in that peace, in that joy, in that love, in that faith. In this place, God. I just want to pray for you and just let's ask the Lord to heal, right? Nothing wrong with that, but I'll just pray for you. Anyone else that needs uh, or using any kind of aid for your hearing? Okay. Let's just pray before we close. We just follow the Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, for, for the person God using hearing aids, we just ask for a creative miracle right now. That God, you will work a miracle in her ears that she will know that she doesn't need to use those things again. Work a greater miracle, God. In Jesus' name, I release a miracle that makes her ears completely whole. She will hear. She'll be able to hear 100% without those hearing aids. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father that miracle. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Wait for your testimony, okay? Amen. Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can 
email us at contact at abcwo.org. Also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.